Okay, excellent. So the first thing I want to say uh, before I actually get started with the run is going to be please help Lu please help us uh, Sven and the rest of the runners that are uh, benefiting from this marathon to get to SGDQ uh, because uh, Sven in particular is involved with the uh, uh, with the lo with the uh, Super Mario Brothers relay. So. Uh, get your donations in for that, and there's also a donation incentive for this run that has not been met yet. Uh, if we can get 95 more dollars uh, by the time uh, I reach World 8-4, uh, this run will actually continue, and there will be some bonus worlds in it. You'll be seeing uh, the letter worlds A through D, uh, as well as World 9. And you really want to see that. The four bonus worlds at the end, letter worlds A through D, are brutally difficult. So, please, please get your donations and you want to see these. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started with the game. Uh, there is a little trick that I'm going to try to do once, uh, just for marathon safety, and I'll explain it as I do it. I won't be saying a whole lot during the run because this is an extremely difficult game. But I'll try to explain what I can. So we'll just go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1, go! So this is Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, originally released in 1986 for the, fam for the uh, Famicom. Uh, the United States did not get this game until uh, 1993. So what I'm doing here is explicitly for marathon safety. I'm going to be getting a few extra lives to make sure that I can successfully complete the game. Just in case the uh, donation incentive does get met, I am going to need a few extra lives to finish the game. That should be enough. So this game is mostly a level pack for Super for the original Super Mario Brothers. A lot of the physics are the same, uh, but there are a few new mechanics added as well. Uh, the category I'm going to be running for now is 8-4 Warpless. We will be beating all 32 of the regular stages in the game. Oh, and I just got fireworks. Uh, the fireworks in this game work a little bit differently than they do in Super Mario Brothers. Instead of just ending in a 1, 3, or 6, uh, what the game does is it compares the ones digit of your coins to uh, the ones digit of your timer, and you get fireworks if they match. And you don't want that to happen because it wastes time. So I am going to take advantage of the mushroom that I picked up to do the lives trick to iframes through a couple of enemies and get on top uh, very easily. So the first, the first world of the game is pretty easy. There's nothing terribly challenging yet, but this game will very quickly eclipse uh, the difficulty of the original Super Mario Brothers. The reason why we, why we in the States did not get this game for seven years after it was released uh, in Japan is because the game was considered too difficult for a Western audience. Oh, I didn't get the swag super jump there. I'll try, I'll try it one more time, and then if not, um, I'll just continue on. There we go. Uh, what I just did there is a super jump. Uh, the way jumping work, or the way jump height works in the game is when you bounce off of an enemy, instead of setting Mario's height to a specific amount, what it does is it adds his... It will add a specific value to his current, to his current vertical velocity. So if you're already moving up when you stomp on an enemy, you'll gain a tremendous amount of height. And this is used a couple of other places in the run. Uh, it's much easier to do as Luigi. Uh, there are actually two different characters you can use for the game, Mario and Luigi, and they both control differently. Luigi can jump about a block higher than Mario does, but is much more difficult to control. And there are some strategies that are exclusive to each of the characters. Uh, Bowser is a jerk in this game. We don't like him. He's very, very random. So if you want to get your donations in for uh, D4 warp for the D4 warpless incentive, 
Uh, I'm, we're probably going to cut that off sometime towards the end of World 8. Oh, it is slightly slower to pick up the star here, but we are doing it to try to avoid some pipe jumps. Nice Kaizo block. Yeah, this game has Kaizo blocks. They're in a few places. There's not too many of them, but some of them are pretty expertly placed. I do need to slow down there after hitting that springboard, because if you go full speed into... Uh, the staircase there off of the green springboard, you will take a hit and you will die. Uh, we're going to be doing pretty much the rest of the game as Small Mario. So, stage 2-2, two, two, this is the first, I would say, hardish stage in the game. I would say in terms of difficulty, we're at about where World 4 was in uh, the original uh, Super Mario Brothers. Uh, of note, I'm also playing on the uh, All-Stars version of the game. The specific oh, pfft. whoops! I was trying to jump on that block to set up a to set up a trick. Dying there doesn't actually waste too much time. There's a s little setup with this block I can do here to skip one of the invisible blocks here. Got it. You're supposed to use a second invisible block uh, and then jump on the jump on that pipe there, but it's slower. So the world record for this game, I believe, is 36, or, that's for D4 Warpless. I forget what the record is for 8-4 Warpless, but I believe it's in, it's either a 22 or a 23. I know the D4 Warpless record is, it's around a 36. And there have been a few Japanese runners that have been uh, tossing it back and, or that have been uh, tossing it back and forth. Thank you, Levin, for the donation. Uh, Levin14 is awesome. He's one of my regulars. And hopefully hopefully we'll make the incentive. 2-4 uh, is the first, I feel, difficult cast... Like, somewhat difficult castle. Uh, the way the Potabos work in the game is they are... Uh, is they, they spawn with the camera. Like, as soon as the game loads them, they will spawn. Uh, but afterwards when they pop up is random, so as soon as you hesitate in this game, RNG starts taking over. So World 3 is the introduction of uh, Hammer Brothers in this game, and of course they give me a garbage pattern. You can get a few different patterns from them, and if you get a low pattern like that, you just, you just often have to wait. Uh, also, there also bullet bill shooters. Uh, oh, nice! Uh, bullet bill shooters start uh, in this world as well, and they are quite random. Uh, you don't want to hit that green springboard at the end of the level playing the game casually because you'll fly over the flagpole, and after the flagpole, there's actually something there. It's a warp to World One because this game has backwards warps. So, water levels. Uh, there are two water levels in the game, one here and one in World 6. And if we make it to the to the letter worlds, there will also be one in World B. Uh, they're all terrible. The bloopers can be manipulated based on which direction Mario is facing, but all the red and green fish you see, those are all randomly generated by the game, and you can get some horrific patterns. You just have to be willing to... Like, eat a small time loss here and there to to try to avoid dying. And it's, uh... It's, uh, it can get ugly. I was delaying a little bit there on the staircase to try to avoid fireworks. Now there's a jump here that you can go for, where you can jump from the left side of that balance lift straight to the platform, uh, but it's a two-frame window and you need to land on the very right edge of the platform to be able to make it. 
it's pretty difficult. I don't actually remember what my personal best is in 8-4 Warpless, but in D4 War for 8-4 Warpless rather, because I my main in this game is D4 Warpless, but I believe I have somewhere around the 26. Uh, world 3 is a maze level. Uh, there are two of these in the game, one in World 3 and one in World 6. You may remember them from uh, Super Mario Brothers, uh, where you need to go a specific way in these uh, castles in order to progress. And those in that invisible block I hit, you actually need to hit that to be able to finish the stage. My coin count is a multiple of 11. I want to try to fix that uh, because if you get if you if you make the fireworks condition when your coin co your coin count is a multiple 11, you'll get a one up at the flagpole. Uh, and you're guaranteed six fireworks. So world 4 is where you'll start seeing red piranha plants that ignore your rules for uh, piranha plants in SMB1. Uh, Lakitu starts to become an issue. Uh, and really, World 4 is where the game starts to eclipse the difficulty of the original uh, Super Mario Brothers. I was actually delaying on those pipes there to uh, try to manipulate the spawns for the spinies. Because if you go full speed, you're going to get a really nasty spawn at the end that can be very tricky to dodge, and I just got fireworks again. Now, at the beginning of this next stage, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, one, there's randomness with the bullet, the bullet bills at the start, but the reason we're getting the star is because of one piranha plant. Right here. You either get, you can either get that star, or you can try to do a pipe jump. And those of you familiar with the pipe jumps from the NES version of the game, uh, you can still do them in this version of the game, but the Piranha Plant hitboxes are fixed. So instead of the, just the stem that has a hitbox, the entire flower has a hitbox. So it makes uh, pipe jumps significantly more difficult to do on this version of the game, and you will not see me go for any of them. So this stage here... That's a two-frame window to make that jump, by the way. That is also a two-frame window. A 4-3 is a common reset point for uh, any kind of PB attempt for runs, because uh, there are two of those two-frame jumps that you need to make. They're just barely possible with Mario. With Luigi, they're pretty easy, but Luigi has his own problems with, uh, with his category and just control. I'm delaying a little bit here to set up the uh, Bowser fire cycle. Wow, Bowser was not being nice there at all. He gave me one of the worst patterns that he can give you in there. Now, there can be a pattern where if he was a little bit closer to the fire bar, there would be pretty much no safe opportunity to go underneath him. And because of that wall, it can be next to impossible to try to jump over him. Uh, World 5 introduces a couple new mechanics. Uh, you'll have uh, piranha plants that spawn from pipes that are upside down now. And then there's one other mechanic that is added uh, for the Lost Levels, and that is the wind. The wind actually has two different speeds on it, and in order to make that jump cleanly onto the Bullet Bill Shooter, you need the wind to be moving at a faster speed. There is a super jump over here that you can go for. Uh, as Luigi, it's pretty easy, but as Mario, it's difficult. This is the intended way you're supposed to get over this wall. Yes, the game just expects you to jump around and find uh, in and find these invisible coin blocks because lost levels. All right, there's a trick coming up at the start of this level that hopefully I hit. I don't know if it has a name, but I like to just call it Fast 
Got, uh, that's the first half and the second half. Cool. There's a couple pretty tight jumps there. And those two jumps take a good amount of practice to learn. The rest of the stage isn't terrible. Just need to pay attention to my timer. Yeah, we're good. Now, World 5 is another common reset point because of Fast 5-2, as well as the start of 5-3. There's a two-frame jump into a short hop that I need to do. Nice. Uh, if you don't do... If you don't do that, you're going to find yourself waiting for cycles on the uh, piranha plants and the paratroopas. It's really ugly. The level's not over yet, though. There's uh, RNG bullet bills. The bullet bills that spawn uh, without that spawn without shooters in uh, a lot of the mushroom platforming levels. Like the, the stage threes of every world, uh, those are random as well, and they can just wreck your day. 5-4 uh, is probably my favorite castle in the game. It's hard, but if you execute it right, you never have to slow down. Except here. That's the only spot you have to slow down. Like, this level looks absolutely beautiful when it's done right. That was pretty much perfect. Alright, World 6. Uh, World 6 comes with another pretty significant increase in difficulty. Starting here, you're going to see Hammer Brothers that are a lot more aggressive. For that to land on that uh, bullet bill shooter that hammer brother in particular can be a jerk as well uh, we're delaying on this pipe here to actually set up the piranha plant cycle on those pipes again this is speedrun community outreach we're uh, taking donations to help a couple of runners in uh, South America and Europe get to SGDQ, including one of the runners that's involved in the uh, Super Mario Warpless Relay. So please get your donations in for these runners. This is a really bad fish pattern. Not much else I could have done about that. And also one thing, uh, towards the end of these worlds, or the end of the game rather, especially in worlds 5 through 7, uh, there are checkpoints still, but the checkpoints are very late in levels. So it's very easy to die over halfway into a level and have to go back to the beginning. Lost Levels is a brutal, brutal game. Remember what I said about getting uh, one up? One up at the flagpole? Yeah. That's how you do it. You don't want to do that because it wastes time. I've gotten so many fireworks in this run. Other than that, the run's been fairly clean. Uh, I was actually supposed to land on top of that block, but I got really ugly fish patterns there, so I, so I kind of had to just improvise. Any level with fish on it, they're jerks. Because all those fish, no matter where you see them, they are all random.
this was the other maze level, and again, we're going to be delaying a little bit here to try to set up the um, the cycle on the uh, on the Bowser fire like that. Also, starting from World 6 on, uh, Bowser is going to be throwing hammers at you, just like in the original game. Uh, World 7 continues to add mechanics. And you're going to actually be seeing one of them, uh, but not where it can be brutal. Uh, we're picking up this star here, not because it's faster, but because it removes a significant amount of RNG from the level. Uh, all of the Hammer Brothers starting in World 7 actually start walking toward you until you pass them. And it really removes a lot of randomness from the level. Alright, 7-2. 7-2, we actually do need to wait for this platform, because this is another level that's split in two. Alright, that's actually very important to hit that Lakitu on the right side of his sprite. Because if you hit him from the left from the uh, left side, he will actually kill you, or you'll kill him on the same frame that he launches the spiny. All right, I'll just let seven three speak for itself for the most part. The only note about this level is uh, optimally you want to. Uh, jump off the green springboards while keeping P speed, which is extremely difficult. Now, optimally, you would try to land on the next platform, uh, but for... Oh, I'm going to actually have to do this the slow way now. Alright, this will be fun. I haven't had to do this in a while. Cool. Alright. Little bit of improv, but it'll work. Yes, everyone, please donate for 100% because we're going to need to cut it off soon. So this is 7-4. 7-4 uh, is the gatekeeper of uh, runs. Not because of the stage itself. The stage itself is no cakewalk, but Bowser is a complete jerk. Alright, Bowser, can you cooperate, please? Uh, this, this Bowser in particular is the reason why this is the gatekeeper for runs, because the fire bar is moving counterclockwise and it's very difficult to get a chance to run underneath him. You, with this Bowser you just have to be patient with and just wait for the first safe opportunity. Alright, 8-1. I think this is the most difficult level in the first eight worlds. To do optimally. There is a two-frame jump that you can go for here, but I'm going to be taking this a little safe just to make sure I make it across there, because that's probably the hardest jump in the level. Alright, what RNG are you going to give me? I mean, sure, I can just take damage there. Absolutely, that's fine. 
I actually completely forgot that mushroom is there. Alright, it's a 2-1 where I'm not dead. The problem is, Lebin, in order to finish this run, um, in order to finish this run, um, I would need to, like, I can't, because it, because then it would be segmented. I can't finish the run. Alright, so there's a silly little glitch you can do here. I love this glitch. The reason why that happens is because there can only be one um, power-up sprite at a time. Alright, 8-3. Uh, this level was probably the most difficult level for me when I first played the game. Because you kind of have to know where things are. Around these uh, these two particular Hammer Brothers, I actually just dodged two invisible poison mushroom blocks. As long as you keep running in that level, um, all the Hammer Brothers will, be, will give you the same patterns. You actually just kind of have to know these two invisible blocks are here. Should be good. Yeah, we're good. All right. <laughs> um, Sven has the donation incentive been met? Because we have we're gonna have to cut it off here. Of course. Yeah, unfortunately, we're going to need to cut it off here. And this is a real shame, because this is an amazing run for me. Alright, now here, this is a little finicky. You actually need to run underneath those uh, underneath those one-block-wide platforms. If you try to jump into there, uh, the game can detect you as being on the wrong path and you'll need to repeat the section. Getting the safety mushroom in case Bowser decides to be a jerk. Alright, hopefully Bowser decides not to be a complete ass here. Please. That was a 26-33. I believe that's a personal best for me. That was a really solid run. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to finish the run um, because, uh, because the donation incentive was not met. And as a matter of fact, according to my live split average, um, this is actually on D4 Warpless PB pace as well. So this is really unfortunate that the incentive was not met. So now what I'm going to do real quick is uh, I'm actually going to set up for the next game.